A t-test, or a student's t, is the simplest version of an analysis of variance, or ANOVA. A t-test is used to compare the mean of two normally distributed samples, which is a sentence that is kind of full of some mumbo jumbo, I feel like, so let's break it down a little bit more. So when we talk about normal distribution, this is what is sometimes called a bell curve, or you'll see it plotted as a bell curve. So a t-test is comparing the mean of two groups that both have a normal distribution or are distributed on a bell curve like that. We should also talk about the mean. If you're not remembering what the mean is, you could also just think of this as the average. Therefore, a t-test is comparing the average of two samples. My name is Keegan. I recently graduated with a master's in counseling. I'm making videos like this to help you prepare for the NCE, the CPCE, or whatever counseling exam you might be taking. If most of you are like me, the research and program evaluation of these tests is not my favorite area. However, there are concepts like t-tests that we still need to have a good understanding of as we prepare for these exams. As I mentioned, t-tests are sometimes referred to as a student's t. And when you write out t-tests, the first t is always lowercase, and if possible, you'll italicize that t also. There are two types of t-tests that I think you should have a good understanding of, and so we're going to cover those here next. The first is a correlated t-test, which is also sometimes called a dependent t-test. When the same group is assessed on two different occasions, that's when we would use a correlated t-test. For example, if a group is assessed before they take a class and after they take a class, that's when a correlated t-test would be used. If it is not the case that the same group is being assessed at two different times, that's when we'd use an uncorrelated t-test. And because everything seems to have to have more than one name, an uncorrelated t-test is sometimes called an independent sample t-test. Something else to be aware of is that you might also hear about two-group or two-randomized group research design. This is referring to a research design that is comparing the two means to determine if their difference is statistically significant or simply just due to chance. There are some other things that you might hear when it comes to t-tests also, and so let's cover those now. One and two-tail t-tests are also something that you're going to want to be familiar with. A one-tail t-test is when the area of rejection is at one end or the other of a bell curve. Then with a two-tailed t-test, which is a mouthful, the area of rejection is going to be on both sides of the bell curve. Next, we're going to cover some important terminology about t-tests that you are going to want to have an idea of. But first, if you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please help me out by giving it a like and subscribing so you don't miss any future videos. Like I said, there's some terms that you're going to want to be familiar with when it comes to t-tests. The first is a t-value. Once a t-test is computed, it will provide or yield a t-value. In other words, the t-value could be thought of as the result of the t-test. Second is the term t-table. This is a reference of critical t-values. Most statistics texts will include a t-table, which lists all of the critical t-values in the distribution. You may have also caught the third term there in that last chunk, which is critical t. When you compute a t-test and you get a t-value, you then have to compare that t-value with the critical t. So the critical t is the t-value listed on the t-table. And so that value that's listed on the t-table is what is known as the critical t. I hope that you found this video helpful. Make sure that you check out the other videos on my channel also as you prepare for the NCE, CPC, or whatever counseling exam you might be prepping for. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.